When I first met Gus Giordano, I saw this incredible, dedicated, energetic person. It was a light that was glowing all the time. Every time he moved, every time he spoke, he was so focused when he would speak to you. He would look you straight in the face and he was so energetic, you want to be a part of whatever he was doing. I was, wow, who's this cool guy? And then I realized this was Gus Giordano, the great Gus Giordano, the father of American jazz dance. first thing that comes to mind is this man cannot strike a bad pose. <laughs> Whether it's a picture or a video, he's always looking so cool. Mr. Cool. That's Gus Giordano. I met Gus Giordano at St. Francis Xavier Grade School in 1967, I believe it was. He came in and our whole class was taught to dance. Gus taught samba. He, we were doing mod, a little modern dancing. It was actually great fun. What I remember most about Gus when he was teaching us is that how literally light on his feet he was. He was literally so light on his feet and so athletic, but like a, a puma, like a cat, a cool cat. I just remember it being a lot of fun. He played really hip music. Unbelievable. One of the uh, moments that I'll never forget in my father's life was when the University of Missouri gave my father an honorary doctorate award. He had gone to college there and my mother had also attended the same university. That's where they met. My mom had passed away and my father instantly he said, I want to do a dance to your mother. She was, I believe, 77 years old. And to move as beautifully as he did and to show that love and that passion and not be, you know, embarrassed or, you know, want to keep it just to himself, he really wanted to show it to everyone. And I'll, I'll never forget um, him climbing the stairs and just reaching for my mom in heaven, and I just thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Gus's character was, uh, was unique and was something that I haven't experienced a lot in my life. Gus, to me, was like the, the approachable rock star. Uh, Gus, to me, was somebody who uh, was this, this personality, this, this, this person that was uh, so influential to so many people and looked up to by so many people, yet everybody that he spoke to, um, he interacted with them as if he was interested in what they were doing and he made time for them. He always was conscious of where he came from and what he had to go through to get there and also conscious about the other people around him and caring about them and always acknowledge the people that help make him great and kind of wanted to do the same thing for other people too. Overall he was just this icon but yet he was this everyday man. I mean he was, uh, 
He was the epitome of jazz for so long and, and became the godfather of American jazz dance, yet he was this approachable person that anybody could come up to at any time and say, hey Gus, I love your work or I love your choreography or I love your technique and he would be happy to talk to them and, and give them the time and make them feel like a real person and feel important. I think that was part of his persona. That, that was Gus. Gus, Gus was, is, <laughs> he's still present tense in terms of his effect, but he, he, he was an innovator um, in the field of jazz dance because he made people take it serious in a way that possibly it had not quite been taken serious seriously before. And what I mean by that is that I think people always loved jazz dancing. I mean, you know, jazz. But the part of it that that possibly had maybe gone off track a little bit was that it was becoming, I think, it was becoming known as a less dignified cousin to modern dance and ballet. And I think Gus realized that there was a, a core of the jazz dancing that was not like the core of modern and was not like the core of ballet, that actually was, had a kind of universality about it. It was something that people move in this way. There's a core in people which responds to music as something that is almost primitive. And I think Gus, he put his finger on this energy, this dynamism in jazz, which became the core of a system that he felt it was necessary for both dancers to study and audiences to appreciate because that core transcended time. So his innovation, as far as I'm concerned, had to do with taking the deep motion qualities of modern dance and grafting them within the frame of jazz music. He was in a sense making it, making you listen to it more seriously by associating with it this tremendously forceful motion quality that came through his technique of you know these, these fabulous arms, these angles that he started creating and this 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 body that was moving through space with almost a, a projectile force. 